All right, welcome to this episode of the Nature Journal Show. I'm really excited to be talking to Angela Hennessy, aka Raspberry Thief on Instagram, Patreon, Twitter, and Etsy. Thanks for being on the show, Angela. Thanks for asking me, Molly. Yay. Okay, well, let's dive right in. I've talked to, I think I did a session where I had multiple nature journalers that have Patreons, and I missed you on that one. Right. Um, I think I had some other people, like Beth Ann was on there, a few other nature journalers. So could you tell us a little bit about what you're doing on, on your Patreon? Um, it's an extension of um, the artwork that I'm already doing on Instagram. Um, so this year I set up a, an art challenge called Season Sketches, which is based on the Celtic Wheel of the Year. So uh, actually I've got a little calendar here. So Yeah, I'd love to see any video. Oh, wow, cool. Where are we now? So the Celtic Wheel of the Year, there are eight um, separate celebrations. So for Season Sketches, each um, date of the celebration, we're going outside and we're sketching and nature journaling. Um, so my Patreon is kind of an extension of that where I use um, the Celtic Wheel of the Year and those um, uh, those dates to help people nature journal. So it's connecting to different plants and maybe those plants have got um, plants or animals, maybe the plants have got um, medicinal uses or, you know, other, other uses that we that you wouldn't normally think of. So Great. it's... Uh, and we've got lot. I've got a couple in Australia as well. So obviously that means that everything's turned upside down. So yeah, they're I was in, wondering in, about they're that going part. into winter while we're going into summer. But they've got totally different plants that are, you know, that the indigenous people have used for centuries that they may have overlooked that are mm. fireproof or you know, there's all these kinds of really interesting things that have cropped up as a. Um, you know, as a result of starting the Patreon. So yeah, I love that idea of seasonal sketching and um, season sketchers and, and just incorporating the, the seasons in a way that makes sense. Because it seems like one of the benefits of nature journaling is to connect people to nature. And the seasonality of nature seems like one of those things that we've kind of lost with some of our yeah, definitely. So I mean, uh, with regards to the Australian part, they've kind of got di totally different seasons that don't actually fit into our northern, you know, the northern right. sort of a seasonal um, calendar as well. Absolutely. So um, could you just explain briefly um, for people who don't know the um, how these um, how the Celtic seasonal celebrations are relevant? I know that a lot of people, you know, celebrate certain um, religious um you know traditions that might be on certain dates like every year or maybe attached to the moon or something like that but not all of them um people realize that maybe it's it's referencing an important time of year from like a nature perspective and i know some have been sort yeah. of um piggybacked or supplanted some previous traditions that maybe were where people knew like oh this this happens at this time of year because this is when this thing in nature is happening and now we're like we just do the celebration for Easter and we don't necessarily realize maybe it's actually connected to um, a certain time of the year. Could you yeah, describe well, that a little bit? Sort of the current wheel we've got, um, I, I think it's actually fairly, you know, modern because this, this oh. wheel here that, um, that, that we use has got, so it's got f uh, eight festivals. Four of them are sort of solar festivals. So they they would be to do with the winter, winter solstice, or the summer solstice and then on the other side you've got the equinoxes so you mm -hmm. can see here i mean this fits perfectly with where i live we've got the light half of the year which is spring you know going to autumn mm -hmm. and then the darker half of the year so the festivals are spaced out sort of between you know between those um sort of axes got so it the 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 year actually starts at Samhain, which is um autumn so halloween right so it's a time of death and rebirth you know we would have been going the plants would have been going to sleep the trees here we've got deciduous trees so they would be you know the idea is that they would all be going back into the ground and to, to sleep so it in nature journaling that you know that's something we can we can go out and look at for that time the plants that are starting to rest and cool so could you show us um you should before we hit record you were showing me some of your pages like an accordion style could you show us some of your seasonal sketching and seasonal nature journaling yeah pages? this is my uh so 
I've been using a concertina sketchbook for quite a few years Ooh, now. I'm going to put you on um, solo so people can really see those pages. That That's really cool. Wow. So this is my current one. That's January. And I'm, wow. just, I'm just catch. Let's find March. I'm just catching up with March and April. So. Wow, cool. So you do a spread, like a three-page spread for each month. Um, sometimes it can be longer. Obviously, okay. um, in, in summer, there are far more you know, plants and things uh, coming up. And sometimes I'll add uh, quotes in or, you know, sometimes if there's um, a specific like full moon or something, I will add, I'll add, add those in. I think this was, was it the wolf moon, I think, at the beginning of January. So that was, you know, quite significant in the sky. So, cool. you know, connecting that to the Celts, I think if you imagine you know, how significant that would have been to them as a, as a you know, weather phenomenon or a mm -hmm. astronomical phenomenon that would have been really important to them. So Great. So on your Patreon, do you provide sort of like prompts around it? I know that you have the hashtag seasonal sketchers or season, season sketchers. Season sketchers. Yeah. Right. I, right. I, I put a page on my uh, website sort of talking about each festival and then on Patreon, I just embellish that and talk about how our family, um, you know, we, we tend to go out and we journal as a family uh, and we do things like recently we've been foraging as well. For oh, cool. um, We found out that some local plants you can forage. So we've been doing that and making food and then, you know, we journal those as well. So that's just a really nice way to connect with the plants and trees and things where you where you live. So obviously, that doesn't work in every um place depending on the right. plants and yeah i love i love that idea is that um behind you on the wall is that i know some people in the nature journaling community have been doing these like phenology wheels and i've seen some on the nature journal club facebook page and they're so beautiful and i haven't had the focus or i'm not sure what it is that has prevented me from doing one yet but yeah it's a, it's a commitment yeah, yeah. Th this this is uh one from um it was an open university BBC TV program a long, long time ago, maybe 10 years ago. And I've had the poster all that time. That's so amazing. I, it's something that's percolated. Yeah, because I, I did a phonology wheel um, when I first started about probably six years ago. And phonology is really the kind of thing that's um, kind of got me into it, like the first looking for the first flowers and the first leaves. And so you know it's when those things happen like the first buds happen and yeah so ant anticipating those things as the year as the year goes on yeah but to commit to doing it for a month it is a that's hard <laughs> yeah i haven't quite figured out how to adapt it to my sort of nature journaling practice yet but um do you have any resources on on your website or on your social media where you talk about how to do one of those um i don't know because i i did yeah. the phonology wheel once and uh, i think okay. that you know that i didn't do it again because it, it is a commitment to doing it yeah i think i'm gonna have to make a video where i talk about that but i haven't quite figured out the, the logistics yeah yet. um okay well maybe you could talk a little bit about it sounds like you also do some botanical inks and natural inks and that's something i've been curious curious about as well it seems like the nature journaling community in the uk is is kind of advancing i know there's some people in the united states that have been doing it but it seems like you and i think alex boone who also has a nature journaling patreon is doing some natural and botanical inks could you talk about those a little bit yeah i think it's just an extension of the way i the way i want to live really you know living sustainably and treading as as lightly as possible and you know all all our um art equipments have you know they have plastic in or you know those, those kinds of things um even watercolor has chemicals in that aren't great for you know if you tip the water out on the ground it's not great for the plants and things so i it started with me and my daughter um were drawing our apple tree outside and we kind of had the idea of you know why don't we make a pen um a pens to to out of the apple tree to draw the apple tree so this is one of the the oh, first ink pens we yeah. made, yeah, and then we thought, oh, why don't we um, make some ink as well? So I've not, I've, I have made some apple leaf ink. Um, actually, I think I might have a photograph, a picture here of the apple leaf ink. Let's see if I can find it. This is a perfect opportunity for me to take a sip of tea. 
<laughs> so this is the Ooh, wow. this is, uh, leaves that we picked, focus on picked up in autumn. So they were a bit crumbly, um, sort right. of on the floor. Wow. So those are the, the, the leaves that have fallen from the tree turned into ink. Yeah, they, so they must have lots of tannin in them. So things like oak galls, we've made oak gall ink as well, and that has lots of tannin in, um, and that creates this really beautiful, beautiful sort of different colour. So wow. adding adding different um, sort of things uh, makes the, the colours change. So the idea is that we'll make a pen for each tree and maybe make some ink and um, as well to go with that and draw draw each tree with a, a pen and with the ink um sort of made from it so it's a bit that, of that's a that is project. So cool. what do you think um so you're 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 a parent how many kids do you have i've got three girls cool so um could you talk a little bit i know there's a lot of parents and um homeschool parents and homeschool families and stuff that um, are interested in nature journaling especially in the u.s could you talk a little bit about what it's like to um, combine like what you've seen, um, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, doing nature journaling with your kids or, um, and, and the seasonal sketching aspect, like, do you, have you seen anything, um, you know, or like, how have they reacted to that? Are they interested in it or, um, or what? Yeah, yeah, they are interested. And I think partly it's because it's just what we've, we've always done. My, my husband's also an artist. So, you know, we, we've always gone out on long hikes and part of the long hike will be to sit down and, you know, we'll sit sketching. Um, my middle daughter often brings a book because she doesn't always want to participate. She sort of does more cartoonies, cartoon yeah. things. But I think just an act of us doing it, um, they kind of copy. So now, now they have their own bag and their own sketchbook in so that, you know, if we're off out on a hike for the weekend, they'll just grab grab that and come with us uh, and now i'll be thinking oh the you know there's i can't see much here to sketch and the kids will be sat down and you know they'll start sketching before oh, me yeah. now so yeah so it's really lovely sitting back and seeing them all sat there with their with their sketchbooks so i think it's just um i think it's like anything if you um if you do it then they'll kind of do it as well without forcing it right do you have any other recommendations for nature journaling for kids? I know that people are asking a lot and not everybody has like a family where everybody just kind of naturally seems to fall into it. Do you have any other uh, recommendations for nature journaling for kids or ways to get them, especially the buy-in part, like getting them motivated? I know it sounds like one of one of your kids is like, uh, you know, kind of doing a little bit of their own thing or, um, you know, I've heard of, you know, people talking about how maybe even in families where everybody nature journals like the kid is just like oh i i don't like this and um do you have any recommendations or tips for nature journaling for kids food food is a definite <laughs> always have snacks <laughs> that's the that's the main one and um, i think just understand that you know sometimes it literally will be 10 min 10 minutes right you know, but it's 10 minutes um 10 minutes for, for yourself and then maybe move on and do something else i mean most of my my outdoor sketches you know this is my what i call my studio sketchbook but my right. my outdoor sketchbook is full of rough scribbly you know scribbly things that have taken me um, right. not as long so i think it's just um understanding that children aren't going to sit there for half an hour while you create a masterpiece you know just right. just drawing something small and making some notes really uh and coming back to it later uh, so it sounds like part of it is managing our expectations around uh what the kids are going to do or what we're going to be able to do while we're yeah with and and building that up slowly you know as they get as they get older so right. like i say now mine all all are all prepared and they sit down before us whereas you know before we would have they would have been tugging you know let's go or uh, yeah wow that's really cool that's uh i bet that's going to be so fun to just kind of see as time goes by in your family how that evolves and yeah where where the kids go with it so do you have are you um are you doing some type of public schooling or what type of schooling are the kids in 
Yeah, they're in normal school in the UK. I think I'm a. I think I should have been a homeschooler, but here we didn't have the. Um, I think you over in the US, you have much more a bigger support network. Um, it's not quite as easy in the UK. So yeah. I guess I've kind of balanced my children being in school with more home school type um, things outside of school. So we yeah. do have outdoors and hiking and um, things like that. So. Great. Yeah, I think it's a generational thing too. Like when I was a kid, the homeschooling was not as mainstream or there weren't as many options for it uh, as there are now. It was more, it was like much more of a, um, yeah, it was like, m it wasn't seen as like as normal, I guess, or there weren't as many options for it. Yeah, it's definitely not normal in the UK. It's yeah. still, you know, it's getting better, but it's still right. seen as, I don't know, not, not as... Um, not, not ideal or not yeah not yeah bad. yeah it's by, the, by the powers that be anyway <laughs> right, right right okay cool um how about um for beginner nature journalers i know um you know maybe on your patreon people who show up or some of them are probably beginners or you have a really big instagram with a lot of followers so do you have any recommendations for people who are just brand new at nature journaling they might look you know at your instagram and be like wow this is amazing and yeah. I'm going to subscribe, but I'm, I feel maybe intimidated. Like, do you have recommendations for people who are just getting started with nature journaling? Yeah, well, that's partly why I started this season sketches as well was to encourage, um, you know, people who wouldn't, who, who are a bit scared about doing it or not sure how to do it. And if um, there, there, I've had quite a few guest artists um, sort of giving ideas to help people um, get started. So I think one of the main things is actually just getting outside, you know, going for a walk, go for a walk where you live. I think if we all, even a little square mile around our house, you know, you'd be able to find all kinds of things. So go for a walk first, maybe scout out um, mm. something that you might want to draw. Because it, I still find it daunting sometimes, you know, sketching outside, because if it's in a populated area, you don't want mm. somebody sort of coming and speaking to you. So yeah so you you could scout out a plant or a tree you know somewhere where you know you could sit quietly um and you know plan plan ahead i think that's uh from from my point of view i definitely like to do that i, I keep you know if i know spot something i'll think right i can go back there later and sketch that nice those are great tips for beginner nature journalers okay um are you ready for the lightning round Yes, I did watch a couple of the shows, so I've got a, a bit of a heads up. <laughs> okay, great. All right, let's see here. Uh, go ahead and make your best lightning sound. It's have to be fault lighting, won't it? <laughs> Ooh, I think that's one of the best best sound effects. I wonder if I could rec use that clip of audio and on all of them now. That was, <laughs> right. that was really good. I think I have a way to make a lightning bolt come across the screen, but I, I, I forgot how to do it. Oh, here we go. Pew, light <laughs> round. Yay. Okay. So um, the first ones are these sort of short ones. Um, um, some of them are yes or no. Um, is coffee an essential art supply? Yes. Okay. At Not home and out on, the, out on the trails, yeah. Okay. Um, are you organized or messy? Um, could I be both? I think I'm messy organized. I have lots of stuff, but it's kind of organized. You can probably see my okay. desk at the back is yeah. <laughs> stuff everywhere. Yeah, okay. Um, do you like making art and nature journaling alone or with other people? Um, with other people, yeah. I, no, there's nothing better than sat with my family and, you know, looking back and seeing them all sat sketching. That's a nice, that's nice. Nice um does your family understand your nature journaling practice yes and my, my extended family do as well so that's great um do you snack while you're nature journaling yes okay um are you a perfectionist definitely not oh okay would you rather nature journal plants or animals uh, I think I'd rather journal animals, but we don't have as many animals that are accessible here. So I tend to do plants and trees more. Got it. Um, ink or graphite? Ink. Do you ever put art supplies in your mouth? No. 
that's good. Even the botanical inks are probably not always great to. Um, no, not really. Yeah. Um, do you like focusing on the big picture or the micro? Micro, definitely detail. I like detail. Cool. Uh, would you rather nature journal on Mars or the deep sea? The deep sea, I think. More animals. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Do you work fast or slow? Um, fast. Um, okay, what face do you make when someone says, you are talented, I could not do that? Probably look away. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you don't like it when people come up to you while you're uh, naked. No, no. Yeah. I, try, I close my book then. Yeah, okay. Um, if you could nature journal with a historical figure, who would you want to go with? That caused a real discussion at our dinner table. Um, Ooh. From... Bronte sisters to all kinds of um, sort of discussions. I, I think I would like to nature journal with either a Victorian lady explorer. Uh -huh. but I'm not sure they'd be too ethical either. Yeah. Prodding things with pins uh -huh. and the relationship with the locals. So I thought yeah. Tove Janssen, Tove Janssen, the um, author of the Moomins. I don't oh, I don't him. know. I don't know about them at all. Yeah, I thought she, she yeah, there's um, some books called Moomin Troll, but they're obviously connected to nature and the season. She's a Norwegian um, author and she lived on a little island in the middle of nowhere in oh, Norway wow. that just looks stunning. So I think she'd be an interesting lady to hang around with for a okay, bit. Okay, yeah, I'll definitely have to look her up. And thanks for pointing out. I think one of the things whenever we start thinking about historical figures is like, yeah, if in modern times they would be, you know, some of the ethical stuff is important to bring up you know like um i i read uh dar i'm reading darwin's voyage of the beagle and there's definitely some problematic stuff like when you're like yeah that's a little bit that's very racist and that's you yeah. know a lot of issue ethical issues but um so i'm glad you pointed that part out okay cool so going forward with the lightning round uh if you had a nature journaling superpower what would your superpower be a superpower oh yeah know. Being invisible so nobody could see me, so I could sneak in places that nobody that would, would know I was there. That would be really good for getting close to animals, too. That's a yeah, good one. Yeah. I like that one. Um, okay. And um, if you had to go to a deserted island, uh, if you were going to be stuck on a deserted island, what five art supplies would you bring with you? Um, I think I would risk it and take nothing and try and make my own see if i could nice. make my own out of what's on the island it may wow. fail i'm wow. also i'm obviously also trying to feed myself as well so that might go horribly wrong but. yeah no well the uh the the question assumes all your survival needs are are taken care of so that's oh, like yeah. a very unique answer no one has ever i mean some people have said that they'll make their own paper and but they'll bring this and that but no one has ever said they'll bring nothing so that's pretty impressive that'd be a good way to get to know the plants and the definitely plants on the island. yeah okay um in the nature journaling olympics which event would you compete in i think i could have the longest nature journal i think my um one of my books is, that that I turned into a printed book is five and a half meters long so i oh think oh my I could, god yeah i think i could probably uh do the I longest love that. Nature that is that is really cool. No one has come up with that um, event for the Nature Journaling Olympics yet. That is really awesome. <laughs> okay, last uh, lightning round question is: um, which character, which fictional character would be best at nature journaling? You can draw from literature or uh, popular culture, movies, or anything. That's tricky. That's a tricky one. That isn't it. You didn't discuss this one with your your kids. I think before. the children. I think Winnie the Pooh was mentioned. Mm. But I think I, I think I would have to choose an animal. Mm -hmm. So uh, the Lorax comes to mind. Oh. From, um, but actually, I think I'll have to choose a UK animal. So maybe the badger out of um, Wind in the Willows. Okay. You, you heard Wind in the Willows. Really wise, typical sort of what you imagine a badger to be like. Wise old badger. Nice. That's a great one. 
Okay, cool. Good job in the lightning round. That was really fun. Um, so a couple, I know that you have some maybe stuff coming up with your kids here in a minute or so, but um, I have some closing questions that I wanted to ask. And um, one of them is sort of UK specific. Uh, maybe you could talk a little bit about um, give people who aren't from there or maybe aren't aren't aware like a little bit of a, a contextual idea of like what what is sort of what would you say is sort of the um, state of of nature connection in the United Kingdom um, and yeah like where how many people like is there is there like a movement around that like is how many people are like interested? Is there like a, a long history of that? Or just kind of give us a little bit of your sense of how connected um, people are to nature. I think it's quite poor, really. I think there's been um, a report done quite recently to say that children in particular were, um, did they call it nature depleted? And I think as a country, we're quite nature depleted as well. You know, um, we, we've, we're, we're losing species uh, plants and animal species and tree species left, right and centre in the UK. But but there is beginning to be uh, more of a movement um, by some organisations like the RSPB. Um, we have the Wildlife Trust and other organisations that are helping to make people more aware of um, nature and plants. So, um, yeah, I, think, I don't even think nature journaling, I mean, it's becoming more popular, but I'm, I think as a you know, as a movement, it's not really started yet. There are a few of a few of us doing it sort of pro professionally, um, but not really that many. Um, you know, it's not it's not in a wider circle mm -hmm. as far as I know, anyway. So, but so hopefully, you know, if we can use nature journaling, you know, that might help with that um, connection to nature as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seems like there are, are there some sort of historical ways or sort of, you know, like other ways that people have, um, you know, like traditions of, of different ways of, of relating to the, the, the countryside and stuff there that are still, you know, maybe could be tapped into or still connected to sort of somewhat of the national identity or something? Yeah, yeah. I mean, definitely. We still have uh, Morris dancers. Um, I mean, they're all connected to the the similar festivals. You know, we have um, sort of quirky uh, festivals like the May Day Maypole with dancing around yeah. the maypoles. So they would have all. Uh, I mean, the maypole originated actually from dancing around apple trees, but mm -hmm. you know, for some reason, as it moved on, they chopped a pole down and used that to dance around instead of just dancing right. around the trees. So, yeah, I think. Um, there is a little bit of a movement of that actually there's quite a few instagrammers that seem to be more into you know into going back and looking at english traditions to do with our um particularly agricultural you know fruit right. growing and the traditions that um would have been around um fruit uh, agriculture and fruit growing so yeah it seems like there is a lot of gardening um it's sort of gardening and foraging type uh, and and bushcrafts um as sort of some of these hobbies other hobbies that are also yeah. trying to reconnect to nature yeah maybe okay cool um i actually read somewhere that i'm always looking at these lists of which are the most biodiverse countries in the world and um on one of them it was saying that the uk is the least biodiverse country in the world but i think that those those sometimes are related a lot to the size of the country so for example like all of the top five countries are like really large countries. So, um, you know, part of that might just be the fact that it's a smaller country and also um, the, the, the amount of, of, of historical sort of industrial time that it's been an industrialized country, I think. Yeah. So a major um, influence there. No, um, I mean, it's definitely changed since I was uh, small, you know, we, just the amount of insects i remember like driving the car really? and the car bonnet would be covered in insects you know when you got back from a journey but now there's you know you, you don't even need to clean the front of your bonnet so it's yeah definitely been a, a change right um, even there's, things like hedgehogs there's, are there's like a hummingbird diving down on me really oh that that it's would be a bucket, listen to this. Listen bucket to this. list to see a hummingbird uh it looks like it's flying up it's gonna dive listen did you hear that squeak? Yeah, yeah. So they fly up. It 
it, they fly up and they they fly up i don't know like 30 meters probably and then just dive straight down and right at the the peak of the the dive they they turn really quickly and make that really loud noise and there must be another bird in one of these pomegranate trees that it's diving on but uh pomegranate think, trees that's that's what that's these really, are wow that's why there's so many bees around me right now too um <laughs> yeah southern california nature is so distracting i always say yeah uh, definitely yeah okay so um what do you think the future of nature journaling is um i don't know but hopefully we we can grow and use our you know as again as a way to help protect what's around us um you got, have you got another one <laughs> yeah I mean, I suppose I, I mean, I didn't even know I was nature journaling when I first started nature journaling. I've kind of come to it from sort of a, a, a different angle, really. So, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. I suppose I like the fact that there's a community and everybody's happy to share. And I do think that's, you know, that's really nice and help encourage more people, just more people to have a go at it, really. What do you think is the the uh, best way that um, like I'm currently uh, really involved or or very invested in trying to see nature journaling um, a nature journaling community grow more in um, Spanish speaking Latin American countries. So like next month I'm going to be teaching uh, how to teach nature journaling um, in the Galapagos and preparing wow. like a curriculum to help them. Partly because I speak Spanish, so that's a kind of um, an easy place for me to focus, but like, um, for, for, oh, the hummingbird might come in the frame here. <laughs> um, for the UK, like, what do you think? So I've been thinking a lot about like, what are ways to, to, um, get nature journaling to like a tipping point where it starts growing on its own, um, in some of these countries. Um, what do you think is a way that, what do you think are some ways that nature journaling could, um, grow in the UK? Gosh, I don't know. I suppose um, probably getting it into schools or getting children involved. And I, I've been involved in um, providing a workshop for an allotment group um, where I live. It, it, I did a, a nature journaling workshop with them. And I'm hoping that here I can maybe start um, a nature journal club. So mm. I, I don't know if there are any other na any nature journal clubs in the UK, actually. So maybe we, we do have lots of forest schools, actually, which mm. um, link in with homeschool children uh, and, you know, normal state school children. So maybe f using forest schools as a base to um, start nature journaling because they already have um, a set up outdoors. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure really how um, how that could how we could progress it but i do think through children is um, yeah that definitely. seems like a great idea well getting getting it into the schools or somehow you know convincing maybe um people who work um in the state schools that nature journaling is a worthwhile topic but then also your other idea of the forest schools like tapping into something already that has similar i know here in the yeah. u.s one way that nature journaling has really grown is through birding because like birding is already such an established thing and there's it's it's easier for those people to see the benefits of nature journaling and they then once nature journaling gets into those birding groups then yeah, it yeah. that way so i i'm you probably have a fair amount of birding um over there as well right we do yeah i mean i i, we, I live near an rspb site um i volunteered there for quite some time so yeah maybe uh maybe that's a discussion to have with um with them cool Okay. Um, is there anything that I didn't ask that you think is something that is important, really important for people to know? Or, um, you know, if, if, if there was a, if there was something, a topic that I should have asked about, like what would, what, what's something that we, we sort of missed? Um, I don't think so. No, I think, uh, it's hard to remember what I've said, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, maybe you could say a little bit more about your um, Patreon or anything exciting that's coming up in your Patreon. I'll put the, the link here um, for people to, to check that out. C is there anything else about your any aspirations or sort of exciting things coming up with with your Patreon? Um, I'm, I'm catching up at the moment, actually. Um, 
we will we've got midsummer coming up um so that'll be the next festival that we do with um with my patron and with season sketches mm -hmm. so that you know that'll be quite a, a nice one where we've I mean, I was out um, sketching at half past eight at night. So, you know, you've, you've got to really take that and enjoy it, you know. So midsummer, maybe I'll be out, at, you know, till sunset uh, journaling. So, nice. Yeah, and I guess on the opposite side of the world, um, in Australia and other places, it'll be, uh, it'll be darker there. But <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, so. Great. Um, well, everybody check out Angela's Patreon. There's the link right there, patreon.com forward slash Raspberry Thief. And you're also at Raspberry Thief on Instagram. And yeah. you're on Twitter quite a bit too, right? Is that true? Yeah, yeah. I, 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 somebody took uh, Raspberry Thief on there. So it's Ange Hen. So it's A-N-G-H-E-N. Oh, so. I didn't realize that. Okay, wait, hold on. Let me, Um, it's how, can you spell it out again? A N G. H E double N. Okay, great. And cool. I, I do have a Facebook page, but I tend to not not go on there. <laughs> I know I have definitely been going on there a lot less lately. Yay! Well, um, it's been really fun talking to you. And are you doing anything for International Nature Journaling Week? Yeah, I, I said to Be uh, Bethan that I would do. I think is it day seven celebration. So I'll be. I'm. I'm hoping to do something for that. So I'm going to pre-record something. Um, hopefully for that. So got that, nice. that to do great well after talking to you i'm really inspired to do some seasonal nature journaling and i'm gonna follow the i'm i'm definitely gonna um put in season sketchers because you're using that hashtag season yeah. sketch right so yeah. I'm gonna start following that hashtag on instagram anyone else who's watching this that's on instagram um it's possible to follow a hashtag so um go onto your instagram and um look for the the hashtag um, season sketchers and then click follow it and you'll be able to see and participate in the community of people yeah you see the whole gallery that we've so we've we've done four um four celebrations so far so you can see the whole gallery of all those sort of the colors as the colors change as we've moved over the seasons which is pretty cool awesome yeah i'm really excited about it. i feel like um you know celebrating the seasons and just even paying attention to those cycles is a way to add meaning and some structure to our nature journal so yeah you're looking for something like that to add to your nature journaling the season sketching and seasonal nature journaling is a good good start well thank you so much for being on the show this has been a, a great time thanks for inviting me great all right for everyone who's watching at home bye, bye.